Hello everyone, I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Thank you for joining me. We have an ice storm warning in portions of Iowa as a wintry weather system is going to roll out of Colorado into the Central Plains, freezing rain all the way up to Fargo, south of the Twin Cities, and a winter storm watch for Sunday in parts of the big sky country of Montana. Lake effect snow continues to pound the, well, the Great Lake states and well, the New England states as well. I'm going to go over all of it right now. We'll look at that forecast for this system and beyond right here. First, let's take a look at these watches, warnings, and advisories in the Central Plain states. See the winter storm watch it effect in Montana. That's for Sunday. That is a system that will be working out of the Rocky Mountains and really starting to get organized in portions of uh, uh uh, Wyoming, rather, as it works its way through the northern plains. That will bring Sunday and Monday impacts also into northern parts of North Dakota and northern Minnesota. Huge, huge ice storm that could impact places like Omaha to Des Moines, uh, all the way up to Minneapolis, and that system will work its way out to the east. Let's take a look, though, at what we have going on with snowfall over the last 24 hours. The reports out towards the uh, upstate New York area are just absurd with... Uh, some places reporting upwards of five to six feet, feet of snow in these areas over the last several days. So now what we're looking at here as we go into upstate New York, going up in the northern part by Rochester, we got four or five additional inches of snow reported out in this area with six and a half reported in Honeyo Falls, uh, New York. Now go just a little bit west of there and we got a foot in Leroy. And as we look at 27 inches right here, but you think that's bad in Attica? Well, we got more snowflakes to stuff in the attic up here. How about the Buffalo area as we look into Buffalo? 34.5 inches of total storm accumulation in and around the eastern suburbs of Buffalo. Look at this. Now you go down south just a little bit here and this is 42.5 inches in Eden, New York. Where do you put all that snow? It's unbelievable. And the snow system is continuing for now, uh, the area for now as we continue into the evening hours. So looking at snowfall areas in and around the Cleveland area, hey, it was no picnic there. 9.4 inches of snowblower mayhem uh, rocking portions of just uh, east of Cleveland. This was at Fowler's Mill, Ohio as well. So a lot of snow taking place there. Now look at Michigan. They they too were in it up in the northern part of the state, but ending in the early part of the 24-hour period there as this system moved off to the east. Check this out, Gaylord, Michigan, with 20.5 inches of snow. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the road reports from this before we get to the forecast for the ice that will be making its way into the central plains. Let's start with Michigan, since we ended with Michigan uh, on the uh, snowfall accumulation maps. And let's go right in here. Uh, this is right there at the uh, UP Bridge as we take a look at the latest uh, Wow, video there, and we're seeing that basically we've got some very icy roads, as you would expect in these areas. Now, you get up in the UP up here, and things were mighty, mighty snowy uh, coming across the large part of the lake there. So from Thunder Bay, with the northwest winds, the largest fetch, uh, bringing some significant snow to the, well, they're dark cameras right now. Look at the snow on the side of the road here as uh, we're checking this uh, uh, location out here. This is at the Sony Rest area. Then as we head up a little bit farther to the north, let's see if we can zoom in to the Marquetta area. Marquette. Look at that. A lot of snow on the side of the roads. All right, now let's check out New York because upstate New York, it's been no picnic there as well. And the road conditions here, I want to point this out. Where you see the pink colors there, those roads are snow covered in that, those areas. And uh, the snowfall is beginning to wrap up, which is the good news. But look at this. In and around the Buffalo area, a lot of these roads are reported to be pink. This is in the area where we were receive, seeing the reports, rather, of 30 to 40 inches of snowfall. This is what it looks like as we take a look at the I-90 uh, interchange here. And uh, again, it's very dark out there, but just uh, amazing amounts of snow. Just in the last 24 hours, some of these places seeing uh, like I said, five and six feet of snow, no idea where you pocket all that snow and put it uh, when it gets that heavy. Uh, up here in the Fargo area, we're expecting just a couple of inches of snow. I don't know where you put the 40 inches like in this camera shot here from Route 179 westbound. Oh my goodness. Yeah, at least they're keeping those roads clear. Our plow drivers and DOT crews working hard in the northeastern United States. All right, what's up with the forecast, you ask? I've got your answer. Let's take a look at what's going on with the American model here. We'll look at the national picture, and we'll take this in just a little bit uh, so you can get a feel for what's going on here. Did I hit the temperature? I did. Let's go ahead and not look at temperatures. Let's look at the hour-by-hour -hour future radar. And 
the isobars here are these black lines that you see all over the place. The closer these isobars are, the stronger the winds will be. Here's high pressure. High pressure, well, that's causing that uh, 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 clockwise rotation around it. And we are going to have that cold flow of air off of the Great Lakes for just a little bit longer before it becomes southerly. Here's the Colorado low that will be ejecting out of Colorado and heading into the central plains. And let's go ahead and start looking at this as we set things into motion. Here we are. As we go into your Saturday morning, this is 10 a.m., we'll see bands of, look at this, see the pinks here? This is overnight and into the morning on your Saturday as we're looking into northeast parts of Missouri. So there's Kirksville, Ottumwa, Iowa, straight north into Des Moines and out towards, say, places uh, like Bettendorf, Iowa. You're going to be seeing some serious icing potential with this system. We're talking over a quarter of an inch, maybe over a half of an inch of ice in places. An ice storm warning has been issued for those areas. Down to the south in Missouri, it's all rain. Heavy rain in some of these bands will be pretty significant. And up in Minnesota, it'll fall as a mix. So there's a winter weather advisory for many in the Dakotas up into southern Minnesota for mixed precipitation, freezing drizzle, freezing snot, freezing mizzle, all of it. We're going to get a little bit of everything with this particular system. Watch where it goes as we head through the remainder of your Saturday, putting it into motion. The low pressure system focuses over Iowa. You're going to get a little bit of a break in parts of Missouri, but the cold temperatures are going to settle in and they're going to put snow and slap that on top of the ice that's down there. It could be very, very challenging for travelers in and around and through uh, the, uh, the De Des Moines area on up into northern parts of Iowa as we go through your Saturday. Now, the rain system makes its way into the Ohio River Valley, snowing in much of Wisconsin. Notice the bands here of light blue. That's not very heavy snow. Meanwhile, it's fairly quiet in the northeast now as you get a chance to pick up. And then the next system is on its way through the Rockies. So this storm system is going to bring some significant precipitation to the uh, West Coast, where you are in line to see several systems over the next several days. Pin your eyes on this, Pacific Northwest. Pin your eyes on this, Northern Cal. Look at this. As we go through the weekend, one storm system makes its way in, bringing some snow to the mountains of central Idaho and western Montana, as well as western parts of Wyoming as well. That's by the weekend. And then you get a little break, and then boom, here comes the next whack. It's coming in from the Pacific Northwest. Again, the Cascades down to the mountains of northern California, getting flakes aplenty out there. Meanwhile, in the Northern Plains, one system works its way through. More on that in a second. We're watching the Pacific Northwest, right? Boom! Another one makes its way in. Finally, a little bit of a break as we head through the middle of next week. This is Wednesday. And then, as we carry it on a little bit farther, things get active once again as we head just before Christmas. This is Monday the 23rd, and check out the rain and snow that will work its way in. So an active pattern in the Pacific Northwest. Now, in the Central Plains, here goes the, uh, Colorado low that brings the ice to Iowa, and that heads out into the Great Lakes region with southerly flow. Now, in the areas of southerly flow, that's a nice little warm-up out to the west, excuse me, out to the east coast as this system works its way through, but it will bring wet weather as we go through your Tuesday the 17th. Look at the white weather in Ontario, looking up there near uh, uh, parts of, well, basically eastern Canada, all of you in a wintry event there. Now, as we continue through, here's the next Colorado low rocking out of Colorado. That one will begin some precipitation midweek in the central plains and another round of rain for southern parts of Missouri, southern parts of Arkansas, into the southern reaches of the Ohio. Ohio River Valley before moving into Appalachia. And look at this, a wonderful example of warm rain on the coast. Here's the cold Canadian air working its way deep south, and that's going to trigger snow showers in West Virginia and also in parts of, well, the Great Lakes, once again, from Lake Ontario, uh, the Cleveland area, all the way south into parts of western Tennessee, a chance for some snow as we go into the 19th. Now, as we take a look at this icing system, I do want to point out here, we're going to go ahead and zoom in uh, into the area of concern here for Iowa and parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin as this system works its way through. And you can kind of see right here is Omaha, Nebraska. So you got Omaha, Council Bluffs, Sioux Falls, Sioux City, Iowa, right in this area here. Let's set this into motion and let's use a higher uh, resolution model for this. Now let's go ahead and use this one. I like this one. Okay, now as we take a look at this forecast model, we get a little bit of everything. We've got rain on the south side, flat out rain in central Missouri. There's Kansas City. Here's Kirksville, Missouri. As we look up into northwest Missouri State College country out there, uh, we're going to start seeing that transition uh, to some sleet 
freezing rain and snow in blue. So freezing rain, where we have the frozen surface, liquid water falling from the clouds freezes instantly on things like roads, bridges, overpasses. And it all begins by the time we get to Saturday morning. You're looking at eight o'clock central time as we go through. Now, as we continue this system through, notice the bands getting heavier as we go into the day. Now, this is a look at Saturday as we cross into that morning time frame. I was looking at the date, not the time. So this is midnight tonight. And then as we go into the morning, look at the heavy bands of rain, freezing rain and snow pushing into the Quad Cities area and all the way north into, say, Rochester and down into southeastern parts of Minnesota. So the low pressure still back here, south winds, it may change. As we get the rain taking over, hopefully uh, some of these areas along the uh, Missouri border here will have a chance to see the rain melting that ice that accumulates out there. Power outages, very dangerous travel, all are going to be possible as we go through the next 24 hours if we get the accumulating ice potential that we're seeing here with this particular system work its way through. Now, as we continue the, on through this uh, storm system working its way into parts of Wisconsin, working its way into western Michigan, that's going to be snow with some rain on the southern sides. How much ice potential is there? Check out this model's rendition right here, and we'll take a look at that amount of freezing precipitation that could occur in parts of of Iowa. Now, sometimes these models overblow it, but this is upwards of one half of an inch of solid ice. Western parts of the state of Illinois here seeing and getting in on the game there as well. So say from Moline up through the Quad Cities, we'll have a reasonable chance at some very significant ice accumulations in these areas over two tenths of an inch, over a quarter of an inch. And even on I-35, as you go through Des Moines and work your way off to the west here on the I-29 corridor, there'll be significant icing potential there with up to about a tenth of an inch of ice in these areas. Top that off with snow just for a whole good time. And roads are just gonna be awfully scary as we go through parts of Iowa. We're going to coat that ice with, look at this, a little bit of snow, particularly on the northern side of the icing here. So uh, at least we're not going to coat too much snow over the top of what's going on there. We're talking about an inch to three inches or so in some of these areas of northern Iowa and into central Minnesota. This is the Twin Cities area uh, from this system that will work its way through as we go through your Saturday. So that is a look at that particular system as we focus in on the West Coast. For you folks watching out there, let me switch this map view over and we'll look at the snowfall accumulation accumulation potential in Idaho and the Cascades as we go through the upcoming storm system. Here it goes. And by the time we get to Saturday, if you're looking at the clock up here, 8Z, we subtract the six hours for central time. That'd be about two, three in the morning. So we have significant snow in the mountains and the Cascades outside. Uh, so Olympia and on down, down south into parts of Oregon, Bend, and south into northern parts of California near Eureka, we're going to have some significant snow potential. How much is this? Well, some areas at the elevation could see well over a foot of snow. This says a foot here in northern California. Where we see these uh, purplish colors, that's over eight inches of potential there in central parts of areas just north of the basin. So there's Boise, and that's where we get that additional lift in the elevated terrain just off to the east and north of the Boise area. So some significant snow working its way through as we go through your Saturday and then another round coming that will add insult to injury to some of the mountains, but it's welcome in the elevated terrain out there. If you're going to strap some boards to your feet and head down some hills, maybe check out Colorado, maybe check out the Tetons out there in Wyoming because it looks like flakes of plenty for the high country. All right, now let's check in on this cold air system that's working its way in after that. And let's take one more look at that national view and then we'll leave you at that for now. Just know this, as we go through the, the remainder of the forecast period, things are looking pretty active here in the lower 48. So I'm gonna have to switch the model here to a uh, national one. Okay, so now we're going to go look at the European model and we're going to take a look at temperatures. Okay, here we go. And let's go to a national view. It's not letting me. So let me go back and go over here. Here we go. Sorry about that. Let's see if my computer uh, cooperates. Here we go. Okay, so now we're looking at a national view. You're looking at the uh, European model. I'll try to center this so we can see most of the United States behind my big melon. Now, as we put this puppy into motion, what we're gonna focus on here is temperatures of the air. So I'll sneak that over here. And now the colors, here's the warm air in red, the cold air, the real Arctic air here is in the purple. Now, as we go through the next 24 hours, this cold blob you see here is gonna slide up into the New England states. That's for the early part of Saturday. Brutal temperatures on top of the snow that you have there. 
Notice that the freezing line here where the blue meets the green moves well up to the north as we get a nice little warm up in the Gulf Coast states. Then after that, we're going to see that little system right here coming through as we go through our Sunday and Monday. North wind comes down and here comes the next British Columbia blaster. This system is going to bring in the sub-zero air to parts of the Dakotas as we go through the early half of next week. And that cold air dives south again, folks, and it could be as far south as northern parts of Georgia and the western parts of the Carolinas as we go into the middle to the latter part of next week. So more cold air coming with the snow. Thank you so much for watching, Deb. I appreciate it. Drop a comment down here if you have any questions at all. I'll try to get to those. But unsettled weather and some very icy conditions heading into parts of the central plains, including Iowa, southern Minnesota, Nebraska, even maybe as far uh, north into southern South Dakota with some significant icing. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. You can get the latest anytime, anywhere on my brand new website, hutchesweather.com. Good evening to you, Northern Grace. Thanks for watching, Jay. Good to have you on here. Uh, indeed, icy conditions across the central plains.